Now, we would like, since this has come to the uh, forefront of our mind, let us all think for a moment how many things we are doing at this very moment. We would like you to get out a piece of paper, if possible, and a pen or a pencil or keyboard. Now let us know when you're ready. I'm good. We're ready. I'm good. Gil and Megan and Nicole. I'm good. Ready. Okay, I'm ready. Very good. Now, we would like each of you to write down, uh, we would say, it is difficult to choose a number all of the things that you are working on right now. Perhaps you are working at your job. Perhaps you are working on, well, we will choose Gil for a moment. Gil is creating a garden. He is growing trees, learning about gardening and things of this nature. He is, uh, we would say, working on writing a book working on creating a movie. He is working at his job and he is taking part in this group. Now there are other things that are more person personal to Gil that we will not share, but there are more things that we have just mentioned that are going on in his life at the same time. Each of you has, you would say, probably at least seven things that you are doing in your life. So we would like you to name 10 of them and we will wait and be patient. Be very honest with yourself. And if we have more than 10, should we keep going? Yes. If you have more than 10, then you should take this exercise more seriously. Uh, we would like to ask each of you how many things do you have on your list? We will begin with Megan. <clears throat> um, okay. I just moved to a new place. So the garden, the house, and the unpacking comes as one. And then I'm doing four courses, including the program with you. I have my psychic and mediumship course. I'm doing one on remote viewing. Um, I'm trying to learn more about light language and I have another one that I'm working on which is called Octascension. I don't know how to, if I'm pronouncing it right. It's based on the Merkaba. Trying to learn more about it. That's all that I'm doing. Very good. Can you break them down more simply into a number? How many tasks? One, two, three, four, seven. Seven tasks. Now, thank you very much, uh, Megan. For the future, we would not ask anyone to describe uh, what they are doing. That is not required. But we would like to know the number of tasks that you are doing. Now, next, we will ask Annie and then John. 13. 7. Tana. 13. 13. 14. Isabella. Uh, I guess six. It's hard to categorize for me. But yeah, I'll just say six. A Gil. Ten. Ten. David. Eight. And Nicole. Eleven. Eleven. Nicole, Tana, Annie. You all have to reduce your list. You have too many things going on in your life right now. Too many loose ends that need tying. If you are scattered from 13 things or 14 things or 11 things, or whatever number amount of things, then you are, your energy is dispersed too much. If your energy is not focused on one particular task or seven, for example, then it is not strong enough 
on the remainder amount of tasks that you have to accomplish. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You have a set amount of energy and that energy is divided by however many tasks that you have to do. So Tana, your energy is divided by 14, etc., cetera, et cetera. That is too much. So we would ask each of you who have uh, the hummingbird syndrome or those that are fluttering around on many different tasks to reduce them to at least 10. The more healthy number is around seven. Because if there is too many things, some of those things on your list are things that you really want to do. Some of the things on the list are things that you must do. And some of the things on the list are things you do not want to do, but uh, sometimes we have to do some other things. And there is all the things that are just garbage in your life, but they still take up energy and time. So whether it is closing a mortgage from an ex-husband or taking care of someone else's animal, then we would like you to find a way to reduce the amount of things on your lists. Does this make sense to everyone? Yep. Yes. Now, yes. after you reduce the amount of things on your list, you will have more energy. You will have more time. You will have more focus to do the things that you want to do that are on the list. So now the next part of the exercise, we would like uh, those that have over 10, uh, over seven, yes, to remove three of those objects from your list. These are the least things that you don't like the most. things that you can let go of, things that are not important to what you want to achieve in your life. And to everyone who has six or seven, even eight, we congratulate you because that means you are able to focus what is important in your life in a direction that you wish to focus it within. Maybe there are several things that you have not just thought of. That is also possible because the exercise is limited to time constraints. Annie, Tana, Nicole, Gil, have you finished? Yes. That did not take very long for you to scratch off three things. So we hope this was a fun exercise. We believe it will be fruitful for those of you who are taking on more than you can handle, because that is the case. If you have more than 10 things and it is more than you can handle energetically. Some of the tasks may be smaller, but we would ask you to finish them and get them out of the way quickly so that you can work on what is important to you in your life. Focus on those three or four that make you really happy. And if you look to your list and you see that none of the things on the list make you happy, then it is time to create or begin a new hobby. So we would move onward with the next exercise. Let us get into a deeper state. <sighs> now, there are things to accomplish. There is work to be done. There are goals to be achieved. And many of these goals are different for each of you. Make sure that you are achieving your goals, those things that you have always wanted to do. Oftentimes we find that these things that we really want to do take a sideline to other things that we must, things that we must do or things that we should do. Whenever we do something that we should do, we are doing it not because we want to, but because someone else wants us to accomplish this task. So for all of the tasks on your list, 
I know we said we, that we are finished this task. Perhaps there is a little bit more. For all of the tasks and things that you should do, we would say, put a triangle by them. All of the things on your list that you want to do, put a circle by them. And all of the things that you must do, put a square by them. Break everything on your list down into those three categories. Now, whenever we have a task that are the things that we should do, these are always things that other people tell us that we should do, should accomplish, that they think that we should do it to become successful usually. They have the best interest in mind when suggesting such tasks to us, but we should know. Notice that we said should. We should know because we believe that this is best for you. So regardless, should is always what someone else wants you to achieve, but everyone else uh, can fuck off. Excuse our language. So this is our life and we will live it as we want to live it. Many people waste their entire lives doing what they should do. They go to law school, they become lawyers. They go to medical school to become doctors. They go to uh, an academy to become an accountant or some sort of computer technician. All of these jobs that make uh, good money and some of them are soul killing jobs. So there are many people that waste their entire life doing what their parents want them to do, to achieve what their parents want them to achieve. But you must know that this is your life to live. Once your parents, once you lay down healthy boundaries uh, that say, no, I'm going to do what I want to do, then you will notice that your life begins to open up and that there will be more people that will tell you what you should do. And these might be your friends. They might say, but we care about you. We want you to uh, succeed. So you should do this. But remember, it's your life again. And then there is the radio. And then there is the television. And then there is the internet. All of these forms of media will tell you what you should do with your life. Will you follow them? Will you do what you want to do or will you do what you should do? We are saying this for a very good reason because you only have so much energy in your life. You only have so much energy per day. And if you expend your energy on other things that you should do, then you waste the energy that you hold. You can put your energy into doing what you want to do with your life to accomplish the goals that you want to achieve, or you will fall prey to those who tell you what you should do. And those who use shame and manipulation tactics to get you to do what they want you to do as well, which is the darker side of all of this. But oftentimes in unhealthy relationships, there is manipulation tactics, shame, guilt. All of these are strategies to make you feel terrible. And then you say, okay, fine, I will do it. Because you do not want to be shamed or guilted so when you focus your energy onto these particular tasks, you will be able to find focus in your energy. You will be driving that energetic force forward that you want to achieve to attain your happiness. 
And when this begins to happen, your life will shift radically very quickly. This is the case with the creation of this school. It was a shift from doing what uh, David's father wants him to do, to take over the family business and to do what David wants to do. Now, this is an important lesson we believe because each of you are individuals. And no matter who you are, you have someone who is telling you to do something. So we would like you to think of these people in your life, take a moment and think of who they are, what they are telling you to do, and write this down on your piece of paper. Now, each of you look at your lists. How many, uh, we will begin in the same sequence that we did before, beginning with Megan. Name how, or perhaps number, how many things are you doing that someone says you should do? None. Excellent. That is very good news. Annie. None. Excellent. Very good. John. I would say none, but uh, I tend to be the one saying you should do this. So it's coming from me and then negating what I might want to do, or it's mostly what I feel I need to do, if that makes sense. Yes, we would say, if you are telling other people that they should do this, then the energy that you are putting into trying to get someone to do a task that they do not want to do necessarily is a waste of your energy. Yeah. Does that make sense for everyone? Mm -hmm. Tana, how many things do you have? Three. Isabella. Uh, none. At first I misunderstood because I thought you meant by prioritization, like I should do the groceries for example, as an I should, but now I understand what you mean. So I don't have any. That is a self-driven should. Okay. So we would not count that. The Gil. Uh, you could say one. Uh, David. I have none. Very good. Nicole. Zero. Very good. Oh, three is too many, Tana. So we see that your energy is being dis divided the most and you are doing the most things that you should not have to do. So this means that several things on your list are likely things that other people have told you that you should do. So once you remove the things that you should do uh, because someone told you to do it, from your list, then your life will be more happy. Because none of us are going to live happy lives as long as we are being told what to do by other individuals. We are all free spirits here. All of us like to be our own keeper, our own boss. But some of us are okay with not being the boss. That is part of a healthy system. So for those of you who have things that they should do, find a way to remove these from your energetic drain pool. These would be represented as minus points in a list of your energy. So if you had 10 energy points, if you had three things that were draining you, that things that you should do, then they are minuses from your energy pool. So for those of you who have zero, very good job. Congratulations. For those of you who have one or more, there is work to be done. Uh, Cal, what if I've experienced my own, I'll call it uh, inner punisher that uh, demands that I do something that's what more what my question was about although there was something that you picked up on that was uh, accurate as well with regard to my son but uh, in my life you know my 
experience has been one of uh, listening to this this punishing agent. I don't do something right, or if I, you know, you got to get, you got to do this, this, and this kind of kind of talk. So that's where I, I where I met the the one was me. Does that make sense? Yes, but it was a negative version of John. Mm -hmm. It is the negative version of you. We would ask you, who is the boss? The positive version of John or the negative version of John? Well, certainly since starting this, uh, the mentoring with David in this class, that that is indeed shifting uh, significantly. Yes. There's more, much more of a distinction and a, uh, a quelling of that voice or just a disregarding of it. But, uh, it still exists, but much less. Well, it will continue to shrink. This is the internal voice within you. <clears throat> it is a voice that is afraid yeah. of not being enough, of not accomplishing enough. And without giving too much information to everyone else, it is none of their business. We would say that this voice is shrinking. And it will continue to shrink until the, we would say the good John is on top. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, we have seen it. Very so continue with your positive thought processes. Whenever you are doing something good, think of a positive thing to congratulate yourself. Yeah. Rather than when you do a negative thing, punish yourself for doing the negative thing. There is more than one way to condition oneself to do and act in a healthy way. When you reward a behavior that is positive for yourself, you reward yourself after going for a jog, you reward yourself after eating healthy for the week. That is positive conditioning. If you punish yourself for doing something bad, that is negative conditioning. So in order to have a positive life, you want to positively condition yourself. This also goes to training your mates and those who, are you, who you are dating or have as boyfriends and girlfriends and things of this nature, husbands and wives. Positive uh, conditioning will create a healthy, happy relationship. A negative conditioning will create a negative a dreary relationship. So whatever your task is that you have to accomplish, do it without complaining. Everyone knows that tasks are hard to achieve. That is why they must be done. But to complain about the task is just a waste of energy. Just accomplish the task. Now, we have said uh, several exercises that will benefit you all in your life.